I always make these videos and then I have a hesitation when I'm editing them, like I'm saying too much or I'm being too raw. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As you can tell from the title, today we're gonna do a little chit chat. I figured, let me share what it's like to work while blind. But we're gonna start from the beginning. What it's like to work while visually impaired to present day, I got a lot to say. Make sure you grab a snack and a drink and let's get into it. So let's start from the top. Where should we begin? Because your girl was working multiple jobs at once. We're not gonna get into everything because we'd be here all day. And let's begin before diagnosis. So I was 19 working at Zara. That's why I got a passion for fashion. And I started to notice my vision was getting worse. I started to see specialists and I would tell my managers as I would go because I'd book off time. And eventually it got to the point where I couldn't see the 24. The 24 is a printout that they do every hour. That's why it's called 24, even though it ain't open 24 hours. And you would go downstairs to the stock room and pull to replenish on the floor. At this point, I was sitting at 2040 vision, which if you don't know, 2020 is perfect vision, but you can actually have more than 2020 vision. You can have less, obviously. So when you have less than 2020, say 2040, which is what I had back then, whatever someone who has 2020 can see at 40 feet, I could see at 20. So it's a distance thing. I didn't know that until I got diagnosed. Back then I had 2040 vision. What you could see at 40 feet, I had to go up 20 feet to see, which means I couldn't see the tiny little text, the tiny little item numbers to get the items. When management said I didn't have to do it anymore, you know what this moment signified to me? Sigh of relief, because I hated replenishment. But besides that, the first time someone accommodated my eye disease, I didn't know it back then. But I didn't realize how important that would be. And if you're living with Stargardt's or a similar disease, you know exactly what I'm talking about. To work at a waiting pool. And I was there every summer for a couple of years. And as a waiting pool attendant with the city of Toronto, basically all you do is you clean the pool, you fill the pool, you chlorinate the pool, and you make sure hazards don't happen with all these toddlers who think they're swimming in an Olympic pool. It's really cute, you know, when you think about it, but when toddlers keep laughing and pouring sand in the pool and you keep telling them no and they think it's a game, I would sometimes get to work an hour and a half, no cap. I wish I was exaggerating, but I'd literally be there so early to sweep all this sand out of the pool that these rotted kids put in there. And I should have really been wearing good sunglasses. That's probably why my eyes started to get bad back then. UV rays make your eyes deteriorate faster, especially if you have a macular degenerative disease. Stay wearing your sunnies, guys. Even if you don't have Stargardt's disease, it's very important to wear sunglasses. I wear them even in the winter time. If the sun is glaring and it's flashing off the snow, you know your girl's gonna be blind and bougie. I had these $5 Kensington Market sunglasses. If you know, you know, they'd always slip off my face, so I would just take them off and for an hour or so, I'd be sweeping all the sand that is shining in my eyes, reflecting off the sun out of the pool. Other than that, it was pretty easy to do the job. I could see faces from afar, paperwork wasn't hard, keeping up with reading and whatever was all good. I would wear my glasses from time to time, but they weren't really helping that much. From there, Casey's, which was up the street, so I worked them both simultaneously. I didn't stay there long. Casey's was not really my vibe. Does it even exist? Maybe for good reason. It was at Union Station, so when they'd have Raptors, Jays, or Leaf games, pandemonium. It was fast paced or was dead. There was no in between. But one thing I remember about that job is there was this one chick who asked me almost every shift, why don't you get a stronger prescription? How many times do I have to tell you I have an eye disease and this is the best they can do for me in these prisms? Prisms cost a thousand dollars. Not because I have expensive frames. No, the prisms cost a thousand dollars, but she'd still stay asking me why I didn't get stronger prescriptions. So annoying. I think that was the reason why I stopped sharing with people for a few years. Kind of like it's not getting through to you because I don't even want to accept it either. Not only that, as a hostess, their setup was kind of prehistoric. They didn't have a computer, so everything was paper and pen. And if someone was scribbling, I couldn't see properly to see. Hmm. And we also had a whiteboard where you have like this pencil you ripped away from. So retro. I'd be like, wait, what? What's, what table is that? There was no way to zoom in. I would just go closer and I'd manage the best I could. I did a good job. And then when I left, I left. From there, I worked at Victoria's Secret. I, 
I can't remember if I started working at Victoria's Secret before or during Casey's. All I do know is I was there for a year and a half and things got funny real quick. I used to have to go close to the screen to see to make sure that I was putting in the right total. If you've ever been to VS, you know they always stay having a special. There's always five for five or 30 for this. And da -da -da. At the beginning of the shift, they'd also have gift with purchase or special promotions or this, that, and the next. They always have something happening. So at the top of the shift, the manager would come and I just memorize what she'd say so I'd know all the promotions. But punching in is a different story. So I had a couple coworkers that I was close with. They knew that I was losing vision, but not to the extent that I was, I never shared with people how bad it was in the moment. I think it's like a safety thing, but also I didn't want to accept it for myself. Two things would happen. My coworker friends would scan something when it was dead so we'd know what the price is, if it was coming up or not. If it didn't come up, I'd keep it in mind, okay, the laces are supposed to be five or 25, but they're not. So when they do, I'll manually change them. And I memorized the keyboard shortcuts to change things quickly. If I was wearing heels, I had to make sure I wasn't on a busy day, not because I didn't want to be walking around and my feet would be tired. No, no, I wish. Because the height difference of me wearing heels, my face from the screen would actually slow me down. So I'd have to bend and snap. If you watched my videos before, you already know about this. I'd go and I'd pick up a gift bag and then the tissue wrap. And as I was bending down, I'd look at the screen to make sure I saw what I saw before I told them what the total was. Then I memorized where the credit card, debit card, and cash buttons are on the screen so that I'd punch it without making mistakes. Out of what? A year and a bit that I was there, I only had two people come back. One, I charged $100 for something that was supposed to be 10. And one that was honest enough to say, hey, this is supposed to be $12.99, not $2.99. I mean, we can say more people got a discount they weren't supposed to get from me and just never came back, but I highly doubt that. And that's not bad for what, 2060, 2080 vision? Oh, but more on a personal note, while I was there, we had this thing where we have to clock back in after a lunch shift. Otherwise, we were committing time fraud. They were so strict and serious about the littlest things. And for minimum wage, sometimes I think back to working there and they really, mm. Okay guys, our goal for today is 150K and you're paying us minimum wage? Chop. I say all this to say, sometimes I would struggle to clock back in. I put my password in the user blocks because I couldn't see where I was typing. You would have thought by then I would start to accept what I was going through. Mm -mm. I think that made me more frustrated than anything. From Victoria's Secret, I started working at a restaurant called Spice Fruit. It doesn't exist anymore. I thought I was only gonna be there for three months until I was done school. Three years later, I was still there. Hated it, hated every moment of it, never wanted to be there, I just wanted to pay off my OSAP. <laughs> the moment of my life when I worked at Spice was a whole whirlwind of emotions. I was still in denial. I knew I wouldn't have worked a job like that if I could see perfectly because my mentality was I couldn't do any better and thus I didn't do any better. And it was an internal and external battle. The external conflict came from wanting to share with people that I couldn't see so they'd understand why I was acting weirdly. I had a coworker who said, oh, you're standing in my aura. And this is before I knew any of this law of attraction, woo woo, airy fairy ish. I'm like, you're what? I know I smell good, so what do you mean your aura? I think now I could have just empowered myself by simply saying, I have an eye disease, I need to stand closer to the screen to see. Take your aura over there. But no, I didn't. I internalized that and I felt like if I wasn't blind, I wouldn't have to be close to the screen and standing in this girl's personal space and her fix herself to say this to me. Everything just became like this cyclical thing of, I hate myself because I'm losing vision and I know Mom, if you're watching this, why are you telling people this? I always make these videos and then I have a hesitation when I'm editing them, like I'm saying too much or I'm being too raw. A lot of times you wanna click on a video and hear the positive side of how I found success and happiness and joy. And I have these things, don't get it twisted, but it was a rough road to get to being confident and comfortable and okay and I'm never all of these things every day, all days anyway, but I'm in a much better state today because I gave myself the space to process what I felt back then. I am a different person than I was years ago, and I could have still been that person if I didn't take pride in wanting to grow and be different, and I want that for you if you feel stuck too, because I felt that way before, and sometimes I still feel stuck. Let's not, let's not lie, okay? A lot of times when you're looking to be inspired or to build confidence, you see someone, you're like, but they're doing well. 
And they don't ever tell you how hard it was or how hard it's been to get to being well. And that well is a state that changes and that's why I make videos like this. So just know you're not alone and it's not abnormal to feel the way you feel and to struggle and to feel like you're suffering with Star Wars or whatever you're going through. So where are we now? Oh, okay. So Spice Root, I was there for three years. For the first two, let's say, I didn't really share with anyone that I had an eye disease. I remember these two girls, who am I, who am I? They didn't realize I was behind them seeing them mock me. And you know what, in hindsight, I probably would have laughed at that because I cracked jokes on myself all the time. But back then, I was so detached from this diagnosis, I went and I cried. I cried. And I remember saying to myself, I don't want to be blind. How can they make fun of me for something that I don't even want to be? I hate it. I hate being here. I hate everything. And it was really, that was probably one of the sadder moments that I've had with my eye disease where I just was so resistant to what was. And I think that's where true sorrow comes from when you don't want to accept the state you're in. I think there is a certain amount of release and relief when you're like, this is what it is. Hands up, white towel, it is what it is, right? But back then I was just like, I don't want to be this person. The Alicia that I've built myself to be up to this age isn't someone who struggles with simple things day to day. But that's not the truth of where I was at. And I'm sure you felt that way before. I had moments like that and it sucked, but it wasn't really that big of a deal as it felt in the moment. I started to share what I was going through the longer I was there and the managers were mostly accommodating. They would write things larger and I'm telling you, it's the little thing. Something as simple as writing with a Sharpie instead of a pencil, world of a difference. Or giving me a couple extra seconds to update you on what the activity of the night is. Or anything that I would do, it's just the patience of the people that were there and the willingness to help went such a long way. I still hated that job anyway. So when I left, I went to a law office because I wanted to get into my businesswoman bag. That didn't last very long. I got let go. I was photocopying-ish upside down. I didn't even know you could do that. But I mean, when you can't really see a fax machine, a photocopier, you're typing on a screen you don't know how to zoom into yet, it's problematic. It was so hard. I just came into work every day feeling dread pulling files and not sure, oh, I have to memorize so I can put it back in the right place. I don't wanna use my phone to zoom in because these are legal documents. And eventually I did share with one of the three lawyers that I have this eye disease. He shared with me, he's dyslexic, I was shocked. But I still got let go two weeks later. So I mean, the bond wasn't built that strong. Not even mad at them, honestly, because I had no business being there at that state. I think I could have do that job really well right now. And that's saying a lot. It would have been 2060, 2080. I was 20, 400, three years ago. And it's gotten worse, so. I still have more confidence now than then, and I have tools to help me adapt, and that's the key. Imagine going through something, not accepting that thing, not telling people, and then expecting to do the job well. No, I don't even know. I set myself up for loss in that one. To think all because of shame and insecurity, I knew the stigmas that came with having a disability and I'd rather go through what I went through than just be honest with myself and open with my colleagues and managers and coworkers. So inside out and backwards, no wonder I was photocopying things upside down. I was unemployed for a bit, I turned 25 and I was just like, this is not what I expected at 25, it was horrible. I just. Blamed it all on my sight loss. I was so upset. A couple weeks later, I was like, you know what? Back to the streets I go, just kidding. I went to the sister restaurant of Spice Root, which was literally across the street. It's called Chibo, and they have several locations. Chibo to me signifies starting to accept my eye disease. I remember my very first shift, the manager I'd worked with for years at Spice is like, Alicia, what's going on? Come on, I know you're better than this. My eyes got worse in six months. And that was a moment of truth for him and I. He knew that I couldn't see that well when I worked at the last restaurant, but he didn't even realize that it gets worse over time. And I, ha I think that was one of the first times that I told someone in a position of authority that I'm getting worse. When I said that, I realized, okay, I have to figure out what the accessibility on this Microsoft tablet is. I gotta do what I gotta do because the work still needs to get done. As simple as a hostess job is, it gets busy real quick. And I really am grateful for the people at these jobs that helped me bridge the gap. And I think that's very important. The tech wasn't really there because the iPad zoomed in when they got one, but the Microsoft tablet was trash. Either way you flip it, I made it work. I did the best I could do. I was there for a few years. I transferred to another Chibo where I became a wine angel. 
thank God for the managers and staff that work there because a lot of them would just say what wine they needed instead of showing me a chit I couldn't see. And then I'd go into the wine cellar and grab it quickly. I just learned to memorize where the bottles were and pull it down and see the label without seeing the label, if you know what I mean. Managers would write things larger, they'd call and say something to me instead of asking me to read what they tell other people to read. It's a good lesson in accommodations, but again, it wasn't the job I wanted to do forever and a half, so I was happy when I left there. While I was at Chivo, I got scouted to work at a Pilates studio, and I had made it very clear that that front-facing stuff was over for me. I have put in my years of working front desk so let's leave this in the past my first day when i get to the potty studio and they seat me in the front desk i'm like wait until somebody else comes or i didn't realize i read the job description but the way it was written made it seem like i was doing the administrative work for the studio not doing the administrative work while running the front desk at the studio silly me so i did that for a few months and i was so relieved when the pandemic happened and things shut down because it was not for me came back did it for a bit shut down again and i got promoted even though i was still doing studio stuff but a new role but to break down this role and what made it important at this stage in my life is speaking up for myself and being an advocate for myself. Before this time, I never had to battle so much with being blind. It was the clients coming in and, why is your screen so large? And having to get real quick, my elevator pitch about Stargard's disease, on point. It's an eye disease, it gets worse over time, glasses don't work, which is why I have to zoom in 800%. How would you like to process your payment? And I wouldn't say it like that, I'd say it much more pleasant, but you have to get quick because people are curious and I can't get mad, I wanna be annoyed, but honestly exhausted is the right word. I was exhausted having to tell every rotted client what my eye disease is. And I thought half the time, I'm like, why do I have to tell you? Just don't look at my screen. No one's telling you to look over here. I had a manager who eventually told me, oh, it's not that you're blind, it's you're lazy. So you mean to tell me all this time up until working this job, I've just been lazy. Okay, good to know. As if that wasn't my first sign to go. Because when God tells you, he tells you once and he tells you twice and you're boo-boo the fool. So by the time that I had someone cursing me out and I'm like, listen, I'm visually impaired. We can sort this out. I just need a manager's approval. Yelling for 40 minutes in front of other people. I don't deserve this type of disrespect. Time to bow out. Goodbye. One really good thing I can say about the Plotty Studio is it taught me how to speak up for myself. Cause I had to say, no, I'm not lazy. And I'm gonna print pages that are 64 font so I can see them. And these are things that I was not asking as much, but doing. It's like, before I used to be like, is it okay if I do this? Or please, can you do this? Like, no. <laughs> if I'm gonna be treated a certain way and I'm visually impaired, now I'm gonna start demanding these things. And when the demands can't be met, which are very reasonable, it's time to go. So that's what your girl did. Used my iPhone every single day to zoom in to make sure that the receipts were okay. I double checked for SKU numbers and all these types of things. Oh my God, when I look back at that job, I don't even know how I did it visually impaired. If I didn't have an iPhone, I don't know. Present day, I pull all the bells and whistles out. I use my AirPods so that I can hear or tell the phone to do something I need to do while I'm typing simultaneously. When I feel fatigued, I get the screen to read it out or I zoom in a lot. I take my time, I write on multiple pages so that if there's a typo, I catch it in the second transfer of information. Like, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. From there, I started to work at Fable as an accessibility tester. Basically what that is, is you go on different websites and softwares and make sure that it's accommodating for a visually impaired person. So I'd run through and there'd be someone on the other side of Zoom as I'm telling them what works, what doesn't work, what can be better. I highly recommend this job to anyone who's losing vision. This is not a sponsorship, but hey, Fable, if you want to add from your girl, let me know. But I say this to say because the statistic is only 10% of legally blind people are employed. This might be something you want to look into. I know it's a Canadian company, but I don't know if they only employ Canadians, but check it out if you're looking for work. Work with Spotify, Snapchat, Shopify, numerous companies testing out their interfaces. It's been a really cool experience. And I actually interviewed for a couple positions to move on up, but then I decided to take another opportunity that I got and that's where I'm at now. And the place I'm at now is it's a mix of a lot of things. I think I wouldn't be able to feel the way I do doing the work I do, which is very demanding. If I hadn't gone through what I went through, and I'm not the type of person that says you have to go through life to get through on the other side. I think you can learn things in different ways. With that said though, 
Had I not had moments of insecurity and losing confidence and feeling lost and dissociated and then finding and fueling myself by becoming an advocate and realizing I have to use my words in order to get help, in order to help other people, I don't think I'd be able to do what I do at this job. Not only that, they make it rain, okay? Not just on my pay, I mean, <laughs> they're like, oh, do you want a 55 inch? It's only $700. I said only, first of all, is that a good price? I don't know. But where am I gonna put a 55 inch monitor? Please tell me. They give me two laptops. They're just completely different from when I worked at the Pilates studio and I was begging for a larger monitor and all they did was take three of the regular ones that they had to the side. And they only did that because it was a panorama and there wasn't that many people in office anyway. That was the best they could do for me. This is ironic. Legally, they're supposed to accommodate a disabled person, but a lot of companies cut corners. Conversation for another day. I'm just grateful I'm in a place where they're not afraid to ask me on a weekly basis how I'm doing, if I need any more assistance. I've met with an OT, occupational therapist, who's worked with me to see what my needs are during work. He actually came to my house and saw the setup and was like, okay, you need to change this and this and this and Zoom tech. Not so sure about the Zoom text, but I'll keep you guys posted on that. Now that I've accepted where I'm at to some extent, still working on that, I'm able to tweak what I'm doing to make sure that I'm doing the best I can do and I'm not missing decimal points or missing three, sixes, zeros, and eights because those numbers always look the same. Losing vision and working is not just doing the work while blind, it's how you feel about yourself while working while blind. It's bringing that into everything and then being able to inform others and advocate for yourself it's like a it's like a recipe almost you need a dash of confidence a teaspoon of being able to speak up for yourself a big heaping cup of good tech a couple tablespoons of managers who care enough to help you along the way co-workers who are courteous and accommodating like you need a lot in the mix in order to be successful at work and I never want you to think it's just you or you're making a mistake because it's your blindness because it's never that it's where you're at how you feel and if you have accommodations to help you along the way so stay positive do your best and always be looking forward. There's a lesson in every single thing, no matter what you're doing, where you're at. So on that note, I'm gonna wrap up this video. If you have anything to share, you know where to put it. Thanks as always for tuning in and making it to the end. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.